This class follows on from the previous one on business planning. I uh, want to start by looking at uh, some of the general issues associated with uh, business planning. And again, building on the previous video. So we start by saying we should calculate realistic estimates of the likely target market. Uh, it's difficult to work out what the target market is, its size and complexity, and and particularly when we introduce time, uh, it becomes a forecast. What will the market be like in a year's time or in perhaps five years time? Well, given the rate of technological change in society and in industry, that may be almost an impossible question to answer. So estimates are used, perhaps statistical estimates or uh, some sort of surveying technique and it's okay to do that, it's quite acceptable but the underlying assumptions and the methodology should be clearly stated so that readers of the plan understand the limitations. So discuss the extent to which market research has been carried out and make absolutely clear the underlying assumptions and the limitations of the study. So look at the uh, current and the potential customer profiles. List the likely existing customer base, who are the existing customers for the product, and who are likely to be the customers in the future, and why. Why are they, and what can be done to, to bring them on board? Discuss the marketing strategy also. Uh, it may not be a lengthy discussion, uh, a full marketing plan might appear as a separate document or it could even appear as an appendix to the business plan, uh, but it's important to, to set out what the marketing strategy is. And it will include such points as the, the budget, how big will the marketing budget be, and also what marketing channels will be used, the ways in which marketing information will be conveyed to the potential consumer. Uh, will it be word of mouth or will it be advertisements on television or uh, how exactly will the customer find out about this product? It depends of course on the nature of the product. If it's uh, an intermediate, intermediate good in industry, perhaps a company making machines engaged in the capital uh, goods industries, then advertising on television may not be the most appropriate, quite obviously. So it depends on the nature of the business, but some, some reference to the marketing channels and how they will be selected and, and used uh, would, would be welcomed in the plan. And what's, th what's the marketing mix? I've listed it here as the four P's. Um, those of you who have studied, already studied marketing will realize that may be seven P's, but the essential four is price, price, product and promotion. Uh, how will the four P's be mixed so as to optimize any marketing effort? Discuss the pricing strategy that will be followed also. And this needs careful research and it will need to set out some discussion of the competitive nature of the market. Is the market highly competitive? Are there many people producing a similar item? Uh, what's the degree of homogeneity in, in the, the product itself? Are all the products on the market identical? Are they differentiated in some way? Uh, so the, the nature of the market needs to be, to be set out. There may be existing close substitutes. If, if the products are identical, there will be perfect substitutes. And that could be a problem for the business in trying to raise capital, using this business plan to raise, raise capital to perhaps expand. So how many close uh, substitutes are in the market? Who are the market leaders? What what are the attributes of the product? What's the cost of production? 
if it's very high cost of production it may not be as attractive as, as a cheaper form. Uh, are the possibilities of outsourcing or is there some possibility of having an alliance with a company in a similar area who would produce components and it could be bought in? These are really economic type considerations. How much disposable income is in the economy? Have customers got enough to buy this product? Is it an essential item for, for people or is it a luxury item? If it's a luxury in times of recession the demand may fall off. People will trim back on the luxuries and purchase the essentials. Again, economics type arguments. These are related to a topic in economics uh, called elasticity of demand. Um, a separate topic dealt with in economics classes. Elasticity of demand essentially means how will the demand for the product stretch according to how much income is in the economy or how much it will stretch uh, if, if the price is increased or decreased and so on. But these are certainly important topics. If the plan is aimed at an existing business, then the business should be able to produce past balance sheets, past profit and loss accounts, and past cash flow exercises, just to show how the business did in the past, which would be a good indicator of the quality of the management and of the issues that confronted the business in the past. But also include realistic future forecasts perhaps a five-year forecast, but remembering to make all the assumptions explicit. Now, some of these documents could be included in the appendices to, to save cluttering up the, the main document itself. So the, append the appendices could be used extensively here. Um, also, the sources of finance should be discussed. How was the original business set up? Uh, is it owned entirely by the shareholders? Was it uh, set up by government grant or was it uh, did it borrow money on the ventures or how exactly was it set up? Um, so again providing an overview, uh, quite a detailed overview. I know that sounds like a contradiction but an overview in terms of answering the questions that the readers wish to know and yet detailed enough to suggest that uh, nothing's been hidden, nothing's been stashed away in the report. Um, the owners must show their contribution to the business. If the owners are not interested in the business, if the business has been left to some managers to run, the owners are not to be seen, that doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound like investors will put money in, put investment into that business. The owners must be involved, must be enthusiastic. That's important. In the financial planning section, well, present a sensitivity analysis for key variables in the financial statement. For example, if the statement shows sales growing at 5% a year, then add 2% and subtract 2% or whatever figure. Uh, here in the example on the slide I say uh, percent sales figures calculated as 10% above or below what is deemed to be realistic. This is sometimes known as the optimistic pessimistic scenario. So really here you're presenting the reader with not a likely future figure but uh, a likely future figure which could vary as much as 10% on either side. So they know what, what is bad and they know what is good. And they also know what is realistic. So that's what's meant by sensitivity. Sensitivity taking either side and presenting a range for the, um, the reader to, to look at. You may also want to present a scenario analysis. A what if? What if sales falls by 20%? What if costs rise? What if 
the machine, a key machine breaks down. Give answers to these scenarios. Again, this may be, um, if it's written cleverly, included in the main part, or it may be, again, relegated to the appendix and referenced in the main part. But the what if questions are important because these are the type of questions that most investors will think of. And if they're anticipated in advance and answered, that's a good thing. The plan has done a good job. Key ratios should also be discussed. Ratio analysis is a part of the course. Um, ratios means that um, large companies and small companies can be compared in terms of perhaps efficiency by using ratios. Um, the, there are many key ratios, there are many ratios available and the class, classes on ratios uh, can list many many types. But ratios are a quick way of comparing different sectors, different companies, small, large and so on. And uh, these can be, can be checked and discussed in the context of the business plan. A projected break even and investment appraisal technique could also be used, bearing in mind that they're looking into the future and the future estimates are based on assumptions and the assumptions need to be made explicit. Just state what the assumptions are. A cash flow schedule um, that, that also could be important, a projected one, particularly in the, the shorter period, perhaps one to two years, um, because major items of expenditure could be perhaps anticipated or be known to be likely in, in the short run. For example, uh, business tax might be known because the government has announced what the business tax will be in the next year or the next two years. Uh, big payments such as those are known as cash burn. But as a cash flow goes into the future, of course, the problem of time and ignorance associated with time, which we all suffer from, that sits in and the cash flow statement itself becomes less reliable. The quality of the information in the statements uh, together with the underlying assumptions should be discussed. I've said that many times over but it's essential that information is put forward and the, the disclaimers as to its quality or its applicability be made explicit. It is wrong to, to use projections and to offer them as fact. They are not fact, they haven't even happened yet. They are estimates and they are based on assumptions. Now the other required information. It should have a, a detailed implementation schedule and expected date of commencement um, and a date for trading. Uh, if you think about it, if, if it's a plan to expand the business or introduce a new line or to make some modification to some existing procedure, uh, it needs an implementation plan. If it says this will happen sometime in the future, that's meaningless. If it says it will happen by the 1st of January, that means something. That's a benchmark. The management and the effectiveness of management can be gauged by their ability or inability to meet that target. But if there's no date, then it's just open-ended. We can go on forever. Uh, we'll do it sometime in the future. No one will invest in that type of um, uh, view or that type of uh, plan. The plan should discuss 
measures taken to meet the requirements of the regulatory environment. There is a legal requirement, for example, uh, in terms of uh, posting accounts. Um, but also there is a, a legal requirements in terms of employment and health and safety and uh, behaviour within the community, uh, noise levels, whatever. There's a whole regulatory framework that must be uh, must be met, must must be uh, must be honoured and must be respected. I suppose those are the right ways of su suggesting it. Um, <coughs> any references, contact information, on data of that type, relevant statistics, they could be included as well. It might be in the appendix. Uh, in an appendix at the end, um, but any anything which again shows uh, sources of information, it suggests that the management have done research and that the the business plan is a serious document. Now presenting the business plan, well, the plan should establish the importance of the project in the mind of the reader. And that's what the plan is attempting to do. It's saying to the reader, this is important and this plan has been carefully put together because it is important. So the, the reader knows that there is a, a valuable document uh, in, in the business plan. Uh, however, it should maintain the interest of the reader. It should be written in a style that maintains the interest. Um, it should not be uh, a very boring document. It should maintain the interest uh, in in the mind of the reader. It should have a good writing style. No slang terms, no abbreviations, no... So it should be written as a, a clear document. The language doesn't have to be bombastic. The language doesn't have to be very flowery or it's not a literary document. It's not a novel. But at the same time, it should have good English and should be written in a good, clear style. So the plan style, well, there should be consistency throughout. The consistency in terms of the formats, the dates, uh, are presented. Number formats. Don't mix Roman and, and uh, non-Roman numbers. Um, how names are presented. And make sure that grammar and tense are consistent. Have good grammar. Run it through a grammar check checker on a computer uh, if, if all else fails. Get colleagues to read it and suggest changes. But good grammar and a clear, good r style of writing is important in the business plan. Avoid long sentences. Um, check for grammar, as I said. Don't mix US and British English. If it's spelt with an S or a Z for specialization, for example, be consistent. But whichever one, but just be consistent. Make sure that the document flows well and is referenced throughout back to the table of contents and have an index as well. And all sources of information should be presented and referenced. The writing presentation, well, make sure that the format styles are consistent and font sizing is appropriate. Uh, 12 times New Roman or whatever has been selected. Don't just vary the font sizing for the, the fun of it because it looks, it makes the document look bad. And make sure the colors of the, the fonts are also consistent and easy to read. So a black font is good. Make sure it's legible, it can be read. Make sure that the grammar, the spelling, the presentation, 
the logic of the document makes it for makes it into a legible document it, it's it's readable but in headers and footers if need be and put headings in on sections make sure the paragraphs are aligned they're not just all over the place one's wide one's narrow and the spacing keep it at whatever is decided one and a half spacing so make sure there's a consistency throughout one and a half two spacing whatever is whatever's agreed so the points to consent uh, consider the plan proposal proposal should believe in the business that's essential if the proposer of the plan does not believe in the business it'll be obvious and the whole exercise is in vain the proposer must, must have expert and detailed knowledge of the product and the market if the proposer doesn't know the market or doesn't know the product again the whole exercise is in vain so it's important that the reader has confidence in the proposer so credibility is essential believability they must believe in the proposer and that the proposer can do what has been said in the plan it must be a real proposal one relates to a real business environment not some imaginary fantasy that somebody had in their head this must be one which is realistic otherwise it won't be taken seriously and trading conditions change and the plan must reflect these accurately there must be an open discussion of changes that have taken place in the market and that are likely to take place in the market and the strategies that have been used and will be used to cope with those changes try to avoid numerous updates after publication particularly in the short run particularly in the first perhaps year um, it suggests that if there are many updates that the original one was not put together properly it wasn't well thought out and that does not reflect well on the proposer any adjustments that are made must be consistent with the rest of the plan so make sure they fit and not just in style and presentation but in logic as well make sure they are consistent with what was said in the rest of the plan there's no contradictions as a consequence of their insertion for electronic presentations of the business plan well use a, a dedicated package is the best uh, probably the most common would be PowerPoint from Microsoft but there are many on the market and many others available um, so if it's an electronic presentation perhaps uh, go that way avoid animations and sound effects if possible animations and sound effects are good in junior school but for a business presentation it's a more serious activity nobody is impressed by a cartoon so avoid clip art but pictures if they're relevant can be included putting in a picture is fine that's that's it could be good if it's relevant not just decoration and off all too often people look at presentations and there's a picture of somebody or of something and no one knows who he or she is it or what it is it's just a picture so what's it doing there so pictures only if relevant but having said that if there are pictures which are relevant they could be a welcome addition it breaks up the presentation use standard fonts don't use comic fonts don't use ones that are difficult to read or ones that look like handwriting again no one's impressed uh, that's okay when people play with computers and or perhaps people in, in 
junior school. That's okay. That's quite acceptable. People should get those experiences. But that's the time and place to get them. In a serious business presentation, use standard fonts. Not just Arial and Times New Roman, but any professional font. There's a whole host of them. And use those. Don't use too many points on each slide. Having said that, I'm probably guilty of this one. But um, about five points. But don't 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 overplay the number of points on each slide. Um, color combinations. Make sure they they fit together. Perhaps as a business logo, make sure it's legible. And make sure there's consistency in the message. Make sure that the listener can follow through the message. And here's one where I'm probably very guilty. But make sure the message is clear and that the tone is, is good and steady pace of speaking. Uh, I'm not too sure if this applies in academic circles, but um, in, a, in a business presentation it is important. Uh, for us, studying it in a more academic environment we can uh, I'm making excuses for myself here planning for a business presentation well uh, it's important to know the audience audiences differ there could be business advisors accountants lawyers banks each one will be looking for what the plan has it has for them and one size doesn't fit all so it's important to have uh, plans that are focused on the audience. If it is an electronic presentation, become familiar with the presentation environment if possible. Get in beforehand. Uh, check the room. Check the acoustics. Look at the podium. Make sure you're familiar with which buttons do what. Uh, it's embarrassing if you press the wrong button and the presentation doesn't work or or fast forwards into the future it's it's not good so make sure that you're familiar with the presentation environment if at all possible and that's that is an understandable request on the part of presenters rehearse the presentation thoroughly make sure you are familiar with the presentation so you're not riveted to, to the notes. You're not reading out verbatim what's on the slide. Be more relaxed because you are familiar with the material and talk about it. So that completes our talk on the business plan. It's in two parts as I've said. Um, I expect you to look through it. Uh, use the slider on the on the video to forward it and bring it back, to stop it, make your notes and research the notes online and in the other material on the courses on the course and pad out what you what you uh, have read here and make your own set of notes. In the meantime that concludes this video so thank you for watching.